know the amount of women that was walking past that shop that we was in? And he just didn't, you know what I mean? He didn't pay him any kind of sexual attention. Welcome back to episode eight, as Tyan Booth begins to reflect on his conversation with Tony Ingle. Let's see if he has learnt anything valuable. My upbringing was a fucking shambles, man. You know, when I think about the people who I was around growing up, I don't want to diss my mum and dad, but, you know, being around people like this guy here, you know, just being in that shop all the time, like, from years back, getting up in the morning, you know, getting into work for hours and hours, you know, being good at something, fixing shoes and that. Maybe you could learn the same trade and set yourself up in Sheffield. Nah, fuck that. It's not really my cup of tea, mate. This is the... Tai Yun is distracted by an incredibly attractive Irish lady. Did you get her on camera? This isn't a peep show. <laughs> what happened to lowering your gaze? Oh, man. Just spent about two hours with that guy talking all kinds of knowledge and talking about discipline and staying away from women and just... I think I'm in too deep, to be honest. Balls deep. Well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Tayan settles down at the local cafe and begins to evaluate on his Dublin trip so far. It's like good and bad. Do you know what I mean? Because seeing how these guys live, they're really disciplined, aren't they? But I know what I'm going to do after this. I'm going to fucking go back to the hotel, get drunk and fuck a woman. And after listening to that guy talking about how he stuck to his wife for 60 years, yeah? He, had a, he probably had a good upbringing, didn't he? You can't... You can't blame your childhood, can you, on everything? You can't blame your parents. You have to be a man and just take responsibility for your own fuck-up sport. It's definitely a lot to do with it, isn't it? Tayan begins to contemplate how life would have been for him if his dad wasn't a weed dealer. I always think that, you know, if my dad wasn't sort of like a weed dealer on benefits, like in and out of prison, getting kicked out of his council house because the police have raided him and took all the weed that he was growing in his council house and locked him up. You know, if my dad was like him, or like a doctor, or like a Brendan, what would I be like now? I'd probably be doing a lot better, to be honest with you. But you can't really choose your parents, can you? You are what you are, you just have to learn from it. Try and absorb like information from people like him. You know, keep it moving, try and progress. That was a touching speech, Tayan. Maybe it's not too late and you can change now. Bro, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, it, it, it hasn't worked. I'm, I'm going to carry on, but obviously we're doing this. So this might improve my, my, my way of life. This might find me a nice little wife. You know, like one of these nice waitresses. Not sure if he's taking the piss or trying to hide behind the pain of his upbringing. If it stops him drinking away his life on that sofa, then there is hope. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love the stream, the drunken streams, the super chat. What about everything you have learnt during your trip in Dublin? Yeah, but what have I seen other than him? Like, I'm not saying like he's nothing, he, he's a big deal, but you're talking about Dublin. It's only him that we've really seen. There was drunken people in our hotel stumbling around all over the place, you know what I mean? So it's, it's like that like all over the world, isn't it? There's not many people like him around. Brendan Ingo's brother, or Brendan, or even like his, What's, what's John, what's Dominic Ingle to him? It's his nephew, isn't it? It's his nephew. Even like them guys, them guys are just like, how many, how many properties have they got? You know what I mean? They don't really drink. Dominic's always in shape, lifting weights. They don't drink, I don't even see like, Dominic like, or John eating crisps. You know, things like that. Simple things. They live around the corner from a chip shop. I've never seen him in the chip shop. They don't drink, do they? They don't really, they don't gamble or smoke. They invest their money into properties. That's what they spend their money on. They're not going to work Monday to Friday just to get pissed on the weekend and buy a load of Coke. They invest it wisely. So what you're saying is that you haven't learned fuck all. Nothing at all, man. It's not, it hasn't, it hasn't been like an eye-opening experience. Like I say, we're in a coffee shop here. If we was in Pakistan and we was eating food off the floor, you know, we're seeing how these people live in Pakistan. 
then yeah, but like this, come on, this is a this is a nice fancy cafe. It's not like a totally different world, is it? What about the Irish people? Do you know what it is? I've I've sensed more of a friendly vibe. You know, like when we went to that other shop to, to try and get some food, and there was no food in there. It was more like a fancy coffee shop. And she pointed us, you know, into the, she pointed us in the right direction. You know, being friendly. So we could go to a proper food shop, you know what I mean? But you know, the effort that she put in, I don't know, I just sense that these people are more friendlier than people in England. But I could be imagining it. Well, at least you loved the Irish people. That's a good start. Yeah, but when I walked into the hotel the other night with a, a bag of Burger King food, a cheeseburger and chips, I sat down in the, the foyer. This guy who worked there, he's like, are you staying in this hotel? And I said, yeah. And he said, what's your, what's your room number? I said, you don't need to know what room number, my room number is, you know what I mean? Why are you asking me these questions? And he was like, okay. And then he like walked off and so that's rude, isn't it? He's basically saying like, I don't look good enough to be in this hotel. Well, he had a point. You get idiots all over the place, don't you? I've encountered some idiots in fucking Dublin as well. Well, you was dressed like a homeless person. What else did you expect? Probably because I just look rough. Everyone had bow ties on. There was a little function going on downstairs. I had a hoodie. I walked in with a hoodie and a Burger King bag. You know, looking all miserable and all. So, I might have done the same, you know, if I seen some guy just hanging about, looking at the women and that. So you was loitering around dressed as a homeless man with a Burger King bag staring at the women. I'm not sure what else you expected. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. You know Naz, yeah? He used to always like kiss his brothers and his brothers would kiss him and stuff like that. Yeah, that is the Arab culture. And Naz said to Brendan, Now where is this going? You know when they kind of fell out? He was like, your, your family, they're not, they're not even close. You don't even like each other. I've never seen you kiss your son Dominic. And Brendan was like, why? Why do I need to kiss him? You know what I mean? Why do we need to kiss? He didn't say it was zesty, but he just, you know what I mean? Some people aren't like that. That's your culture. My dad's never... <laughs> My dad's never kissed me, man. What about your uncle? Did he ever try to kiss you? My gay uncle? Nah. Maybe you need to experience Arab culture. Nah, fuck that, man. Fuck that. I don't want to talk about it. Not everything has to be zesty. How was it hugging Tony Ingle? Nah, it was all right, man. It was all right. It was all right. It was all right. It was all right. Well, he didn't force you into the hug. Yeah, it's kind of forced when he ate. Well, no, nah, shout out to Tony, man. It's real life, innit? Yeah, we'll go back to base after this food here, man. It's been all right, though. It's been okay. As Tayan finishes off his brunch and contemplates life, Uber driver Sharif waits outside to take the cult leader back to the Clayton Hotel. I should have gone in here to buy a bottle of alcohol to take back to the hotel. That talk with that Tony guy, Brendan's brother, has done nothing for me. So all that talk about his upbringing, the emotional background music, his dad smoking weed, and how alcohol fucks everything up was a waste of time by the looks of it. Tayan is now determined to treat himself to a bottle of wine, but will Uber driver Sharif wait for him? Is this guy here now, the taxi driver? Let me go and get a bottle. All right, Sharif, you, yeah? That's right. Have I got time to get a bottle or not from this shop? Sorry? Have I got time to buy a bottle of Echo Falls? Oh, is that okay, yeah? Quick you can. All right, sorry, yeah, one sec, yeah? Sharif tells him to be quick, and with that, Tayan skips into the super value store like a man possessed. There appears to be a sense of desperation. Just look at his walk. Oh, we're in Dublin, aren't we? I don't know if you sell Echo Falls in here. Maybe no one drinks Echo, Echo Falls, Falls in Dublin. You did say yourself it's a drink right. for, I quote, scumbags. Where is it? Excuse me, do you sell Echo Falls Rosé? Which? Echo Falls Rosé or Blossom Hill. Uh, oh, yeah, we do. You got some, yeah? Oh, yeah. Have you got, have you got any Echo Falls? No, 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 I ain't got any. This one? No. So I'll have a look round. It's got to be here somewhere. Yeah. Thanks. It's Blossom Hill's there, yeah. Looking at his pure desperation, you wouldn't think he only left Tony one hour ago. Shall I buy this? Oh, fuck it, don't mind. Let's go, man. I think we should go before this taxi driver fucks up. Too much fucking about. With numerous alternative options of wine available, 
It appears the conversation with Tony Ingle has some impact on Tyann Booth as he reluctantly decides not to buy a bottle of wine. Maybe this could be the moment he was looking for. He just needs to figure out which way the exit is before he changes his mind again. How do you get out of here? Yeah. Is this the way out? It's that way, isn't it? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, it's still here. He doesn't look happy. I'll fucking waste the time. But maybe this is the new beginning he was looking for. Join us for episode 9 for the final installment of Tyann's trip to Dublin as he reviews his sexual encounter with the Dublin women. It's drained the life out of me, that did. Five fucks in about half an hour. Our members are now four episodes ahead of non-members. Join now for only £2.99 a month to watch all the exclusive content. Enjoy this short teaser of Tyann goes on a date with an OnlyFans model. Yeah, thanks for that.